Hi, broadcast. Hello, everyone. Happy Court of the Dead Day. We are uh we're we're like the pre-show, Amy, before we're all alive from the underworld. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna sort of get everyone pumped and prepped for Court of the Dead Day. Right now, it's just a conversation with me and you. No one's here just yet that's fine i i love these conversations between us <laughs> just just between friends <laughs> once we go live it'll be more um you know it'll 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 probably shake and th shake things up a little bit but hello everyone starting to roll in now happy friday also known as a national holiday happy court of the dead day folks <laughs> um my name is paul and i am joined of course by amy chase hey everybody <laughs> how you doing uh or amy should we get this out of the way first right can you maybe give people a brief explanation? You got I'm I'm giving you 430 words. <laughs> That's oh it. My, oh my Oh my god. <laughs> Can I aim it? Can I aim it instead? Yes. No. Um brief explanation of the day or of Court of the Dead itself. Let's do of Court of the Dead and then right after we'll explain what Court of the Dead day is and then we'll get right into this our tabletop game showcase. Oh, we've got such sights to show you. Uh, for those of you just joining us or just if you're a regular here but you're not sure what Court of the Dead is, it is Sideshow's original dark fantasy horror property from the twisted mind of Tom Gilliland, uh, brought to life through a number of statues, games, comics. Uh, we've got, there's prose novels in the works. There's a short story you can download today. There's so much Court of the Dead content, but it is basically the story of Death, the All-Taker, the figure that we think is the Grim Reaper in the end. Um, but he is a hero tasked with a burden to collect souls to fuel the never-ending war between heaven and hell. They, they are both equally bad in the scheme of the universe, destroying things for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. But seeing the truth of the reality, uh, Death steals away souls that he 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 gives some to the harvest, but he keeps some for himself and creates a, a court of the dead. And these are going to be his rebels, his leaders that will uh, eventually rise, conquer, rule and restore the balance of the universe. And it is so cool. It's a that it's a story. Taketh away. <laughs> it's the story where the people who look like the bad guys, the monstrous, mm -hmm. the scary, the ghosts, they are actually the heroes and they are dealing with their own tortured uh, existence, but they are rising to a more noble purpose. And it's. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. And I mean, you guys can see some of the characters behind me. Just look at those costumes and the details. It's just, it's one of my favorite things. It's actually why I became a Sideshow fan was because I was a Court of the Dead fan first, if yeah. you can believe it. Yeah, I was I was uh, explaining to, I think, Andrew Seco, who you guys will see plenty of today as well, of course, um, that I was, you know, at a, I, I was just at my job and someone was just telling me like, hey, you should read these comics, they're free online. So I actually first went to courtofthedead.com, which you can go to right now, for all things Court of the Dead, before I ever went to Sideshow. Um, like I went, I read all those comics online and they were all fantastic. Um, they're beautifully written. And we actually just covered a bunch of them, or, or a majority of them on our on the comics hall, which you guys may know me and Amy from. But mm -hmm. let's get into it, because today, again, we are celebrating Court of the Dead, rightfully so. This is going to be a 24-hour event. We are going to be live from basically 9 to 6. We've got a full schedule of um, different things that we're doing. So, of course, we're doing our tabletop game showcase right now. We'll get right into it. But at 10, we've got Court of the Dead alive from the underworld. That is a um, a, a really well-produced, um, sort of like a small booth tour. I, I don't want to spoil it for you guys. <laughs> it's going to be fun. But in that, we're going to have another episode of Win, Lose, or Die with Andrew Seco, myself, and Brad Gage. Ooh. Then at um, 1 o'clock, we have another. We have an instant giveaway at 2 p.m., Cobbled cosplay with Amy versus Andrew, which we are all very, very excited to see. Because one this will be the, my first time cobble cobbling a cosplay. Cobbling a, and Amy is an expert cosplayer. She's been cosplaying quite a bit, but you know, in ten minutes, we'll we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, and friendships will be ruined, so we're also excited. Um, and then, uh, of course, at three o'clock, we've got a hundred percent promo code hunt. And then at five, we've got an episode of Friends with No Benefits, our wrap up of all things Court of the Dead. Amy Chase will be on. And of course, we've got a special guest come joining us for that show as well. So that's going to be really, really fun. I'll but also have a sneak peek at some of the uh, some of the new court collectibles or, or they're on our website yes. already. But some of the, the production pieces that are coming in soon, so you can see them first, uh, mm -hmm. what they look like in my collection before I have to give them back. <laughs> and for uh, just so everyone um, is up to date here, we've got a couple of things that you can do right after the show because we're you're gonna have about a 10 minute gap between this show and alive from the underworld so 
you can go take our brand new faction quiz. Head over to side.show forward slash faction quiz. If you are, um, if you've already taken it and you know your faction, first of all, shout it out in the comments. We need to know who are the other, uh, I think it's, they're called the superior faction, the flesh faction, I've been told. Is that Whoa. right? Andy? <laughs> Whoa, you you don't want to say that. Andrew and I, the, the two ACs are running from the spirit faction, so you don't want to disrespect us today. <laughs> Well, you know what? I've made my bed and death will lay me down in it. So um, that's our updated uh, faction quiz. You can go to all, if you want to see everything that's going on with Court of the Dead Day, we've got a beautiful landing page, side.show forward slash Court of the Dead Day. There, C-O-T-D Day. Um, and then we've got an awesome Gleam giveaway right now for the Shard Mortal Trespasser. It's side.show forward slash uh, Shard giveaway. And that's for this beautiful oh. statue here the um, only mourner or the only mortal in the underworld excuse me <laughs> <laughs> yes i actually i haven't read that particular story yet i'm very very stoked um and then of course we've got an awesome 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 uh giveaway for oh where did it go for a uh a exclusive art print signed by tom gilliland but amy i i think we need I think we need to get into this tabletop game showcase. So yes. without further ado, Amy, take us away. All right. Well, I do want to, the faction quiz was a great thing because the um, factions will play a big part in the gameplay of a lot of the, the gaming properties that we have. So you do want to make sure you know what your faction is for today. But I wanted to get started with, if you're a gamer like me, um, I do a lot of tabletop uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a, a three-year dungeon master at this point. <laughs> um, love painting miniatures. So all of those things will be satisfied uh, when you dive into the world of Court of the Dead gaming. Of course, uh, Tom was actually inspired by his own love of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so there's a lot going on there. But I wanted to step you in gently with the gaming accessories that are available. Um, Court of the Dead, of course, has uh, deck cases and uh, play mats available. Um, I personally have the Kier, uh deck case. I emptied it out just for this show, but I have used it to hold my Dungeons & Dragons spell cards. It's a kind of a standard gaming size case. It comes with a, um, these, the designs come, I don't know if Kier is still on our website, but I know there are several other designs like Galavarb and um, Uglavale and just Ilverness in general, that is the capital city of the underworld. Really nice uh, standard plastic, um, holds about 80 cards. Uh, these are from Ultimate Guard. Um, so if you're a gamer, you can check that out. Um, this is also great for holding the cards for some of the games. Um, and then with that, this is my uh, game mat slash mouse pad supreme slash uh, <laughs> sometimes it's a place mat. Um, this is- Mouse pad supreme, new band name I called it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is one of our uh, standard gaming mats. You can see that it's quite large. I can't quite fit it all in the picture. Uh, this is Oglavale and Scratch, Og and oh, Dog, beautiful. as we like wow. to call them. Yeah. And I, unfortunately, I don't know who did the artwork on this piece, but it is so vibrant. I've had this one for about, actually, I've had this as long as I've worked at Sideshow, so almost four years, I think, three or four years. Um, just really, really nice. And it does have the mouse pad material on the back. Um, so it's great for putting under a workstation or again, for gaming to put your cards on or rolling dice on top of so you don't scratch the table. Um, so there are a number of those on our website. And I know that some of them are included in the grand prize giveaway, uh, which is a which gaming are. pack uh, from Court of the Dead. So if you guys are interested in that, those are some nice accessories. You can kind of keep the beauty of the underworld uh, with you while you game. Now, I do also want to mention um, before, because I don't have the actual physical piece here, there is a premium card set. Um, and Paul, you can possibly... Uh. Oh, the, the poker set. Oh, the, yeah, the poker set. So there's Boom. a premium dealer poker set. Uh, this debuted at Comic-Con 2018, I believe, uh, part of a pro partnership with Project Raygun. Um, the suits have been replaced with the flesh, bone, and spirit faction logos, as well as Underworld United. Beautifully detailed. There is a premium dealer coin as well. Uh, and they had some fun promotional items for this. So that's what I have. Uh, this was back at Comic-Con. If you guys remembered, you could play against the dealer. And if you won, you got the coin. And if you just played in general, you got a Malavestros uh joker card for your you mean comic-con that thing where we could go and be around yeah, people back oh, wow. the, yeah back in the old days um so if if you are uh, a long-running court of the dead fan you might remember those things but that is part of the premium dealer poker set that is available on our website right now i believe for uh twenty dollars us yes all right so paul what do we got next um well Amy, when Amy shows up to a show, she comes correct. And she brought everyone a gift from the underworld. So if everyone could please do me a favor and head to side.show forward slash code and enter 
Underworld 21. It's for the first 2,000 mourners. Um, and, and that again, is Underworld with a three? <laughs> with a three. <laughs> Instead yes. of an E. <laughs> yes, because we're creative here at Sideshow. <laughs> and there are three factions. That's exactly why I did it. <laughs> I you know, planned this out meticulously. Love it when a plan comes together. Uh-huh. So again, everyone, head over to side.show forward slash. Uh, I believe it is. It, I'm sorry. I believe that is reward code and um, enter Underworld 21 or just go to the Sideshow Rewards um, page there. But all right, Amy, you're all up. Right. So what else got, you got for us? We got two games. So there are two primary games that you can order. They are available on our website in stock right now. You can sit down, have a lovely family night. Uh, and I say lovely family night, even though the main aim of the games is a little bit of backstabbing, uh, especially with this one. This is Court of the Dead Dark Harvest. This is the more fast-paced party style game. Uh, nice. I'm, I, I want to really, really take our time with this because it's so cool. Uh, but it is for three to six players for ages 13 and up. And games mm -hmm. will take you about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so this is the box. And I think you guys can kind of see there's spot gloss on the illustration. It's It might not is be cut. Yeah, there we go. That's textured as well, right? Yes. It's got some texture on there. That's, yeah. So there's the spot gloss and like, I guess it isn't quite gloss gloss, but there is, yeah, like a really nice, let me see if I can get that again. I'm very bad at identifying the camera angles on this thing, but you guys can see um, there is some texture to the box. Um, beautiful designs. First of all, right, right here. Uh, we've got Abigail Larson, full illustration on all of the cards and the box design. And there's even characters all around. So we've got Malavestros. Uh, we've got Relic Ravlatch. Uh, I will be severe, uh, super impressed if anyone can identify that character. That is Sakafari. That is her kind of newer design based on oh, um, wow. what she appeared in in the Mourner's Call That's game. Cleopsis. Cleopsis. Uh, and then I think, oh, and then we've got Kier and Galavarb. So Dark Harvest is, is meant to be a fast-paced game that really takes the idea of what Death has to do in the Harvest to appease the Celestials. Um, one of the important things to know is that Every human soul, every mortal soul has etheria, which is the innate energy. It's represented by blue in Court of the Dead, and that is kind of the magical color. Um, and the etheria is what fuels heaven and hell's war machines. And so death has to uh, balance how many souls he gives so that they don't get suspicious and realize that he's building a rebellion versus he does need to build his rebellion because mm -hmm. this this way of the world can't continue. Um so I have not physically punched these out, but you guys can see these are some of the play tokens that come in a nice uh, cardboard sheet. You've got faction tokens. Excuse me. Ooh, those faction tokens are worth the price of admission alone. I know. Aren't they so cute? Just and these are the three, like my reward code. <laughs> and these are um, the the illustrations were done by uh, Abigail Larson, but I know that I uh, Yvonne Karitarev did uh, contribute some artwork to this as well, but even the the faction logos have received Abigail Larson's kind of signature, um, very whimsical uh, and still dark style. So there is a full instruction booklet. We're not going to sit here and read this, but this was produced in conjunction with Skybound, uh, part of the Skybound partnership. Um, ooh, and there's a nice look at Demethyl, the Reaper General, some game credits uh, designed by Ben Kepner. You can see all the development, the design, and creator of Court of the Dead, Tom Gilliland, of course. Uh, so there is there is a full detailed uh, rundown of how to play the game. But again, you guys are here to look at the really cool components and the pictures. So I love what's going on here. And it has Ooh. a custom, custom box insert uh, kind of clamshell feature. And I will take it out so you guys can actually physically see this. Um, really nice. It's got the Court of the Dead logo, the Dark Harvest. And this is this is some nice plastic. Like if you are if you are Ooh, concerned be, about the game protection, cool, like for your court of the dead setup, if you put just like a small LED behind it and just hang it up, so yeah, everything I mean, is collectible, folks. You can get creative, but it does hold in the nice tray of uh, some game components. Now this is interesting because this tray is currently empty. This is for where you po uh, poke out all of your. Um, your tokens for the soul count and the the factions. Oh and wow! You can kind of yeah. So when you finish opening all the components, you can kind of put that together. Like uh, but then, pick. because it is for up to six players, these are the player screens. You can see each one is identified by a unique color. 
Um, that will also correspond to tokens in the box. Uh, but it's really nice because these screens not only hide what you're doing while you're playing, but they do have a detailed breakdown of the rules. Oh, that's and good. some artwork of Demethile. And actually, it's fun. I'll get into some of the cards um, shortly to show you some of the artwork. And then that is Ilverness. That is the... Um, actually, that specifically is Dergol, which is the Well of Souls that kind of shoots up through the center of the underworld. So if you see any drawings of the capital city of the underworld, that is kind of what's going on. Um, but there are some court characters in this game because you play cards for effect uh, that can force a player to play without their screen. So they have to do all their moves in the open. So it is a game of bluffing and backstabbing. A um, lot of fun. So oh, good. The, yeah. the, the key essentials of not only playing games with other people, but of the Court of the Dead underworld. I feel like Autumn would have fun with this because specifically I remember the, the wrap-up show you guys did where she laid it all on the line that she's a Monopoly cheater. Uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, big <laughs> Slytherin oh, energy. Yeah, this, this is the type of game for if you want to uh, backstab and uh, bluff with your friends. So I don't want to tip this completely over, but you can see there's actually a custom Court of the Dead insert on the bottom half of the clamshell. Uh, there are some really cool, uh, beautiful little black stones. And these are for kind of like the, um, there's some bluffing elements with the stones. Uh, and the and then that's a great point, Amy, because it, it does, it it. It, it feels like there's so many elements to this game. And also for people in the comments saying, um, Autumn is also Flesh Faction, as am I. She does not represent everyone in the Flesh Faction. Let's just say <laughs> like But the Flesh, the Flesh Faction is all about adapting and changing to your circumstances. And if you find that everybody else is a nerdy nebbish who's going to play by the rules, absolutely adapt and overcome and uh, cheat a little bit on the side. But if not, they get... You're not trying to win. You clearly don't care. So, oh, wow. Um, and yeah. again... You know, uh, Amy, we've had some people here in the comments say um, that they are really, really excited about this game and they are happy to play it. So are there any games like, again, we on the comics hall, we like the aim system because we definitely like to make things as accessible for people. Um, are there any games that you think off the top of your head that Dark Harvest can sort of be related to? Oh, that's a great question. I'm trying to think. Huh, because I, I definitely know for Mourner's Call, that's like an epic campaign style, like hour and a half game night, but little bluffing games. I mean, I don't play a lot of the fast paced card games, right. but uh, I will continue to think on that. But that this is really um, it, it. It is like any game of, of bluffing, lying and kind of playing cards to assure that you it's weird because it, I mean it's not weird. A lot <laughs> of the theme of Court of the Dead is because these characters do look like the villains and the monsters, and, and I mentioned they are battling their selfish natures and the the power hungry side of them. A lot of these games for Court of the Dead do play against you have to work together to fool the Celestials. That is your right. united goal. You want to make sure you meet the tithe, but you've got your own personal agenda because somebody mm -hmm. does win in this game and you want that somebody to be you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see when I play games with my family, it's cards against humanity. It's Yahtzee. It's uh, it's, it's, it's those types of games where the fighting is incidental, but this is a game that really does encourage you to balance how much can you do for other people while also serving yourself, which I think is a lot of fun, which um, is a wonderful metaphor. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, so uh, these are, um, kind of, they're not quite your meeples, but they are, um, for identifying, um, your, cause each of the, sorry, the screens. So this is like, this is the black screen cause the logo is inverted. And so you see there's the black tokens and these are for identifying, uh, there's no board with this, but you do place them down to represent, uh, your influence on certain tiles or, or cards that are in play. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't believe that we've had a playthrough of this game on our YouTube channel. There's also extra baggies if you are uh, concerned about keeping your components separate. They, right. they do provide you little, uh, little Mylar slip bags, which is really nice. But I want to get into kind of um, the meat and bones of this, which is the cards that you will be playing. Oh, uh, wonderful. Don't want to go through everything because this is a huge, huge deck of cards. Um, but the illustrations are amazing. So there are... 
cards that represent each of the factions. There okay. are faction, there's characters, there's faction favors, which actually allow you to break the rules of the game. Uh, and then there are the Underworld United characters. And the Underworld United, you'll notice, is actually the logo that combines all three factions, but it is the characters that also kind of exist above um, the identifying of factions. They are Their purpose is to try to unite the Underworld. Um, so specifically, of course, we do have Death, the Dark Shepherd. He is more commonly mm. referred to as death, but he prefers the name, the all taker uh, because that is the more um, benevolent accurate. name. Yeah. Benevolent and accurate name that he has chosen for himself. Death is the the kind of title that he was given by the underworld. And also you guys can see that. I just love how it's so subtle, but this is so, this is such a whimsical redesign of the faction logo. Um, and so and you can, these are all Abigail, uh, Abigail Larson. Yes. Well. These are all Abigail Larson. Uh, so you guys can see, like, each of the cards has an effect. All players announce how many souls are behind their screens. The player with the most gives four to the player with the least. And so there is a lot of uh, influencing. Uh, there's It's like a bidding system. So at some point, you draw a card that says the Celestials will demand this many souls. Everybody kind of secretly makes their bids. And the person who puts in the least is punished in a way. But you have to decide, do you want to be the person who puts in the most? Or are other people going to skate by because you are being more altruistic? Oh, um, right. Okay. So it's it's very it's very fun. Yeah. Um. Sorry. In the chats here, uh, somebody said this is Eric Hot said this is like poker with a twist. It kind of is. Yeah. yeah. I guess I guess that would be the the bluffing game I was thinking of would be poker. Um, we got Malavestro. It's like how fun he is. He's kind of the fool that no one takes seriously, but because no one takes him seriously, he has eyes and ears everywhere. Yes. Um. And then of course we've got Shard. And then she's got a uh, she's got an effect that is the end of the game. So you really want to go through all of this, but I'm going to just pick out some of my favorites. This is the Dreadsbane Order. They are so cool. We'll talk about them a little bit in Mourner's Call. Nice. Um, but we see, and these are all characters whose cards, it's fun. There's a lot of interplay and story you can get between the two games. Um, so you, their cards are in uh, Mourner's Call as well, but we've got Femoral Vati of the Flesh Faction, uh, Scarpel of the Bone Faction, and Kayla Kill of the Spirit Faction. And a lot of this art, Amy, is, is only seen in Dark Harvest, right? Like it's not it's not anywhere else. You can only get particular renditions of these characters on these cards. Yes. Um, I, I do want to give a quick plug, though. I do have an original. I wrote an original short story, an Elian Asta story. Actually, here she is, the woman of the hour. Um, and Abigail Larson's illustrations are featured in that story. So if you guys want a little bit more Abigail Larson art, you can download the free story today. Um, it is on our blog. You can go to side.show slash COTD day. Uh, mm -hmm. Check that out. Um, getting asked if these are bigger than uh, standard size cards. So as I showed you guys earlier, this is the Malavestros like poker card that was given out. Uh, these are, in fact, much larger. <laughs> Much, much larger. And when wow. we get to Mourner's Call, there's even bigger cards. Um, yeah, like tarot size, right? So Yeah. Uh, yeah, these are roughly, um, I think, a little smaller than tarot. And then if anyone remembers, this is Gettys Avancor, the Dread Shadow from uh, Shadows <laughs> of the Underworld. Um, so you can check him out. He's actually in the Flesh Faction deck, or uh, Spirit Faction deck, I'm sorry. But I will skip over some more. We've got, of course, Kier and Ogla Vale. Um, but this this is a fun one. Some fan favorite characters in the Conclave of Shadows. We've got Rafe, the Lord of Blades, and Loach and Drimdram. Any any Loach and Drimdram fans out there? I love them. They've got a kind of Gomez and Morticia uh, relationship. She's one of the most beautiful creatures in the underworld. And then Loach, who's our guy in the back here, uh, he's he's just a detestable creature. But they love each other. Well, I think, um, the the background colors on some of those cards are those relevant to what that card can do? Is it like a flesh faction card? Yes. So um, the overall coloring in the description of the character. Uh, so this is spirit and this is flesh. You guys yeah. can see the Underworld United were the gray characters as well. Um, who else do we got in the flesh faction deck? Of course, we've got the Queen Mother Gethsemane from the front of the box. You gain influence uh, by playing her card. And so it's it's all about who you want to keep close to you because their abilities will serve you better while you also work to serve the Underworld. And then let's get to the bone faction. Uh, let's see who we've got here. We've got the Council of Osteomancy. I believe this is Gort and Crane from the Council of Osteomancy. Very mysterious. Uh, Zyle's kind of right-hand uh, men. We've got the Mortis Knighthood. Ooh, I like Legendary that. Legendary warriors, of course, led by Demethile and uh, Mortigal's Reaper Captain as well. Nice. Uh, and then we've got a fan favorite, Relic Ravlatch, and his True Burn Lantern. And look, because he is a searcher, 
uh, you can use his card to find, uh, to look at other cards in the deck and uh, choose to activate them. So a lot of the characters have uh, functions that are similar to what they do in mm -hmm. the underworld. And then we've got the harvest cards that you can see. This will be the oh, yeah, yeah. skills demand this. Oh, cool. And it, it gets increasingly escalated until you get to a point where you can, it's, this is like the almost end game. And if there's one of these that says, if you fail to meet this tithe, the game ends. Yeah. You lose the game. Uh, oh. And then there are uh, faction cards that actually allow you to break the, the rules of the game, which is nice. a little bit fun uh, where it's, it's like you can change how many souls you put into the bid after they've all been revealed. If you have one of these, uh, or like you can you can choose the winner of a tie if you're the bone faction. So there's there's a lot to go into here, and it's so much fun. Uh, I highly recommend everybody check this out. I would love to sit here and explain the rules to you guys, but I know we also have to unbox the Mac Daddy of all board <laughs> games. Uh, and and a Amy, we're getting some folks now that are saying that you, they just took the test. Uh, Zeke the Wise over on YouTube says, "I just took the test, and he's Spirit Faction." Oh, well, Congrats. wise, of course, Elliot of course, got a prizes wisdom. So uh, that sounds like that is the perfect home for you. Welcome and, to the and, Action. Um, and just so everyone knows, um, we are live actually on YouTube in the Let Your Geek Side Show Facebook group. And for the first time, I think in the Rise Conquer Rule Facebook group. Oh uh, so hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. We've gained quite a few uh, souls since we've started the show, Amy. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the Tabletop Game Showcase. I I Amy is our, is scribe the right word? Arcan Arcanaist is actually the word kind of uh, for the court. Of the There's Librivost, which is like librarian, but Arcanaist is like the historian of the underworld. No. So I, I, would, I would dub myself an Arcanaist. But not, an an, not an anarchist <laughs> not, well we'll see so that is dark harvest we just covered that beautiful box again with the illustrations by abigail larson and yes. as paul said this is the place to find those illustrations i don't believe the majority of them have been released elsewhere so uh really fun fast-paced bidding game available on our website i believe it is 25 usd it shipping is. now and it is for three to six players and the games take about a half hour it's it's a lot of fun it is yeah it's like fast-paced poker where you're bidding with souls yes and for everyone out there, there's, you know, we had some people say, and again, I love this question because all it does is people are asking the right questions and they're new to Court of the Dead, which is what we're doing here. Excellent. Uh, they're saying some of these should be statues. There are a ton of Court of the Dead statues. Uh, just look right behind Amy. And right now, today only, if you go to the website and at checkout on select Court of the Dead items, uh, if you go, you can get 10% off with the promo code COTD day. You enter that right after checkout where you would enter any normal promo code. If Dark Harvest, Mourner's Call, or any of the other multitude of things that we are going to showcase throughout the rest of this day interest you, today is the day that you're going to want to do this because this code is only going to be active for today. But um, I, I want to make a note. I will show it later tonight when we do our wrap up show, but Abigail Larson actually did contribute artwork to one of the statues. She did death, the curious shepherd, which is the stylized oh. representation of the all taker um, interacting with a oh, mortal it's, soul. It's beautiful. It's I love beautiful, it. So and I have the sample and it is much bigger than I thought it was, which is really cool. Uh, so we so, will yeah, show that tonight. Six if, coasters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't I don't know about that. I, it's a, it's a big one. Uh, but speaking of big ones, I really want to get into this because I know we have a time limit before Andrew Seiko's win, lose, or die comes up. Okay, guys. Uh, this is <laughs> Mourner's Call. This is oh. really heavy. I cannot pick it up one-handed, which uh, I tried to earlier and almost injured myself. Um, now... There are two different versions of this game, and I will be... I have the Kickstarter version, because of course I backed the Kickstarter. Uh, huge fan of Court of the Dead. So there are some differences, and I will explain them as we uh, go through, but they are both on our website. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that the Kickstarter edition, uh, which is a limited quantity that Sideshow um, was able to obtain, that is 120 USD, and then there's a $100 uh, edition, which is the retail standard edition. Right. Um, so, uh, sorry, because I also have the 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 pieces that Tom loaned me to show, but I, once we get into the box. So first of all, um, the Kickstarter edition came with an exclusive faction sleeve of your choice. I believe that if you purchase the Kickstarter edition off of our website, it's a, you get a randomized faction randomized, sleeve. Yeah. Um, and these are the illustrations by Alex Horley that were previously released as fine art prints. This is the transcendence of spirit. 
So of course you see, we've got Kayla Kyle, we've got Kier, Aglavale, Avarkas, what's up, uh, Charon or Charon, I'm actually not sure how that's pronounced, but like the ferryman of the underworld and uh, Elianastis watching from behind. And then uh, Scratch, can't forget the, the good boy. Um, good boy. And the, the sleeve actually does have some explanation of the faction of spirit on the back. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go into that, but you can take the faction quiz to find out. Um, now, as I said before, this is a game for those of you who like the long haul, if you it's not a deck building game, but if you like to sit down for things like Lords of Waterdeep or Tyrants of the Underdark or uh, Gloomhaven, uh, you're definitely going to want to pick this up. It is for ages 14 and up. The Kickstarter edition. Us. It, that is <laughs> us. Uh, the this is it, it takes about 90 minutes to play, but the Kickstarter edition right. is very important to note. It's for two to five players. The retail edition is two to four players. Uh, so here we go. Boom. This is, so this is the, the standard box game cover with some spot gloss. This is also an original piece by Alex Horley that kind of encapsulates all of the most uh, notable heroes. This was created uh, in collaboration with Project Raygun, uh, designed by Pat Marino. Ooh. And this is the breakdown of what you get. Again, remember, this is the Kickstarter edition. So the metal pieces are only in the Kickstarter edition, which is what is making this box so gosh dang heavy. Uh, but without further ado, let's get this bad boy open. Uh, there's custom box lining that they printed into this as well. The Kickstarter campaign was so exciting. Um, I think it was funded in a day. Got this really cool, like, nice Jeez. paper sheet. I've kept every component of this box. I've kept every wrapper. Um, so when you open it, first thing you are met with is the board. Oof. I don't even think I will be able to display the entire board. You have to have a table that's that's prepared for this. Sure, I'll, 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 I'll hold some of it. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that, Paul. Uh, this game is amazing, and I've actually gotten to play this one. So I live alone, and I buy way too many board games for a person who lives alone. <laughs> but uh, last year, we filmed a um, we filmed a playthrough with mm -hmm. Pat Marino as the kind of um, walking us through the the living rules guide, and it was uh, another team member from the op. Satine Phoenix, Tom Gilliland, and myself, we played through the whole game. Pat answered our questions live as we went through. So if you are uh, curious about this game and how it plays, highly recommend checking that out. The, oh my God, I don't even know how to unfold this. Um, the, oh, and then there's a, this is like a, this is like a book. Full glossy rules guide. Beautiful, beautiful book. Oh. Um, but the board has spot gloss on it. Let's see. Woo! There's. Let's see, I am not a oh, table. Oh. There we go. Can you see it? Oh, I can't you, even see you guys. Yeah, you've got most of it. If you want to go a little bit up to your right there. Boom. Okay. Wow. And I will just. You guys can see that there's actually spot gloss running through the veins of Etheria throughout the board. This is a hefty, hefty board um, with lots of famous locations from the underworld. Of course, the Well of Souls is the center <laughs> of it. Uh, but let me fold it up a little bit so it's a little more manageable. Um, you guys can see that there is a place for um, putting tokens on the board. This is actually the uh, Celestial Suspicion track where you are balancing oh, You are balancing how, uh, how much the Celestials are kind of catching on to what you're doing. There's also a Dreads Grip track, which is uh, how much you guys are being bad. And if any one of them tips over, everybody's going to suffer, which is again, why you have to balance uh, that kind of dark nature. You guys can see that we've got life's ebb here, which is kind of the towers of mocking time. Time moves differently in the underworld. Uh, there's the theaters of memory. There's That's Calvin it. Harrow's, the armory of the dead. And then outside we've got the DJ, right? <laughs> no, definitely not. And we've got uh, kind of rakers at the gate. And rakers are what becomes of the mourners who fall to their darker nature. Oh, that's um, beautiful. I've never seen the game board. Um, like, I, I think, as for lack of a better word, as in person as we're going to get these days. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. yes. So then oh. here's the Dreads Grip Tracker. And then you also have locations like Cryptus Accor, which is Gethsemane's kind of uh, castle. Uh, we've got Grendel's Pillars, which is a monument to um, kind of the testaments of, of shame uh, right. in the underworld. Um, we've got the Vadlam Gates, the Dearth Forge, just everything. And Hush Hide, which is Malavestros' private sanctum. Uh, beautiful, beautiful board so much for you to explore it is fully illustrated everything i mean even i just want to point out like the celestials here on the tracker you've got a demon and an angel just fully illustrated um, uh, yeah it Ashley, is 
Ashley Brienzo on Facebook says that is a game board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now that is a healthy you, game board. For those of you who like Warhammer or you like Dungeons and Dragons, check this. This Ooh. is a custom insert yeah, we might with actually all of your benefit if I zoom in here. There we go. This is a custom insert. So once again, we've got that nice protective plastic. Oops, I haven't taken all the tape off. I told you I kept everything. I kept the tape. <laughs> Uh, custom insert with the, you can kind of see the Underworld United symbol to protect wow. all of your guild tokens. Now, I'm not going to flip this up, but I will take them out individually. There are two guilds for each faction. Here we've got the Bone faction. This is the Mortis Knighthood. Oh, and you, okay. get, you get like a dozen of these guys. And then this is the Council of Osteomancy. And these are fully detailed miniatures i love that they come in the um kind of evocative color of the faction so if you don't choose to paint them you still have a very easy visual representation of which uh faction this belongs to and faction influence is very important as you play the game um now we've got two beautiful ghostly guys this is our dreadsbane order knight he you can see he's kind of got the Whoa. spirit essence coming out of him the dreadsbane order combats the dreads grip in the underworld they are very important in that way and they're i mean for such a s small piece it's it's got so you know so much detail and texture all around it i don't even know if i can get all the way in let's see there's skulls on his chest oh, like wow. i sorry about the the resolution we have um here. we have some people in the in the chats amy who have played this have this and they are saying they reckon they that uh how good these pieces look that it was delayed a little bit to make sure the pieces look as good as they do yes and then we have the grave dancers circle another beautiful spirit faction character so much movement um i just i love that little crook and staff she's got uh these are these are just so beautiful. And I've actually tried my hand at painting uh, some of the larger miniatures that come mm -hmm. with this. Uh, but of course, we can't forget the flesh faction. So we've got the Shroud Reeves Coven, which are the Stitch Witches who are, you can actually see, this is actually two characters. This is the Stitch Witch on top of a mourner shaping. So here's the oh. Stitch Witch and there's the yeah, mourner you can see the... that they are shaping into a new form to fit the underworld. And, and just then... something about that color is unsettling in like the best in-world way. Yeah, and actually I feel like the this is this is one of the like most sturdy of the characters just because of the way that the witch is on top of the it's it's so creepy. Uh and then we've got the uh the Conclave of Shadows which are our strike from the strike from the darkness assassins. Oh, whoa. Lots of action going on in this piece. Very dynamic. Um so yeah, as as I showed you, I don't want to tip this completely cuz but here's your tray. Your tray of uh beautiful faction tokens um and those are the guilds of the underworld and as you play the game uh you will recruit uh the help of the the guilds and you can um one of the points is to kind of attain the highest level of influence with the guilds so that you can get them to do what you want now there is one more insert tray and i will pull this out mm. crazy we got another one of these uh plastic covers but uh while we're on the topic of miniatures Boom, Demothile with his Crypt Morn sword. You can see that's actually the blade that uh, Mortigal holds in the premium format figure. But we've got yes. Demothile. And then we've got Odium representing the Flesh Faction, the Pit Reeker, Reincarnated Rage. And he's a big boy too. Look at you can see he's even got all the little nails in his back uh, like he does in the premium format figure. Yeah, our premium the, format of that yeah. is insane. And then you've got Kier. And you can see that she is holding the severed head of an angel. Just a lot of fun. I mean, you never want to show up to a party empty handed, you know, <laughs> and whatever you've got laying around is, is usually most helpful. Ooh. Now here's, here's yes. Coins. The, oh, if you say, Ooh, coins, there's, there's coins aplenty in this game. Um, <sighs> at the beginning of the game, you do choose a faction that you are, uh, that you are pledged to, and you have an right. ulterior motive. You don't tell the other players your ulterior motive. It will influence the way that you play the game, but you do have to openly declare your faction. And so there are metal allegiance tokens that you place on your player board. So everybody can see which faction you're working for. So they may or may not try to stop you in gaining influence in those factions. What uh, is the then, texture and like weight on those? Um, well, here's the sound of them. Nice. Um, Sounds like a vacation. 
these they feel like quarters genuinely oh, they've okay. got the kind of same thickness of a quarter uh beautiful black wash to kind of bring out the faction elements um it's just yeah okay. they're really no i'm not gonna bite them uh but yeah no these are like <laughs> genuine metal coins uh not legal tender anywhere but the underworld but uh Oh, well, you do what you can. Um, now, there are two larger miniatures that come with this game. And I do want to actually show you the, the nicer ones first. Um, Tom Gilliland painted, and, and Tom Gilliland's a painter. He painted full uh, detailed versions of these miniatures. You get Malavestros and Death. And they both serve very cool functions in the game, um, determining turn order, breaking ties, changing the effects of locations. So Tom has graciously loaned me the full painted miniatures that he created your miniature will be gray mm -hmm. and i will show the i will show the gray miniature but this is That's if you are choice. if you are a painter have fun go to town this was tom's own malavestros and and again tom everyone for if you are just joining us tom gilliland is the creator and the mind behind court of the dead he's why we're sitting here today yes <laughs> And then here is the all taker himself. Oh, look at the look so oh, at the souls. This is insane. Just beautiful, beautiful. So I want to show you now the representation of uh, death. So this is this is what you will receive with the game. But if you are a mini painter, or you know someone who is a mini painter, uh, have at it. And then I personally have taken a crack at painting Malavestros. I'm not quite finished with him because I am not a painter. But this is my Malavestros. He's a lot bluer than uh, Tom's, but I'm working oh, on it. He's, he's almost like with yours. See, with like uh, with the one that Tom had painted, I definitely get huge Court of the Dead, Underworld vibes. With yours, I kind of get like Jin vibes from oh, him. Oh, okay. You know, and that's sort of how I envision Malavestros. Anyways, it's like a Jin with that bright blue face. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And he's he does have that kind of whimsical quality of just being there, knowing what's going on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm not even a special painter. This is just acrylics that I use for like my D&D &D miniatures. But again, your miniatures will come full gray, but they are the perfect canvas uh, for painting. Now, oh my God, there's still so many pieces here. Um, one of the Kickstarter exclusives is that there are custom dice with the court logo on the one side. Nice, nice. Uh, the dice are used to determine how much Etheria uh, players have to pull from, and that is your currency, but that's also what you end up having to give to the Celestials at the end of the round, so you want to manage your money very carefully. Um, these are the game cards. You've got Wallow's cards, which give you your objectives to go, um, <laughs> this is Filth Husk the Blightmaker, uh, rakers and other tasks you might have to go do in the midst of your... Um, kind of machinations and then there are the alter ulterior motives that give you again your direction uh in the factions just crazy stuff let me these are kind of uh and, and have, you, have you played mourners since um since that that playthrough with tom since that fateful day no i have not had the opportunity but i am itching to do so i i've i've begged my DD &D group that as soon as we're able to get back together in person safely after i give them uh, a round of our DD &D campaign they have to sit down and play this with me because i think that they would love this um now we do have a couple more other things couple more other things what the heck am i saying so remember the kickstarter edition has the exclusive fifth player uh fifth player edition so like these uh allegiance tokens there are five of them because you could have five people playing for the bone faction uh i don't think you would want to because that's not very balanced in the underworld but you can have up to five people playing for the same faction. Um, there are over 90 metal tokens in all, um, and I'll get to a couple more of them shortly. Uh, there are the custom dice and then the faction sleeve. Um, and then you get extra trackers and Etheria to account for the fifth player. But the standard retail edition, all of these coin elements that are metal are uh, a very nice premium cardboard, uh, very detailed illustrations as well. This is the Dreadsbane Order token. Whoever has this can't fall to the Dreads grip. Uh, and won't be affected by rakers in a location. Um, Dread, Dreads main order, guys. You, you need to, to get on that. Now, speaking of rakers, these are going to be your primary villains. These are uh, more miniatures. There are five of these beasts total. And they are Ooh. purple because that is the color of the Dreads grip. Uh, and these represent mourners who have fallen to their darker nature. And you can actually, I don't know if you can see, but there are like skulls in their shoulders as well as their faces. Like these are absolutely 
twisted, corrupted. If you've read Shadows of the Underworld, uh, then you'll you'll see exactly what the darker power of the Dreads Grip uh, can do to a person. Um, so there's just a couple more things I wanted to show you guys real quick. Uh, these are, the, this is really cool actually, the custom player board. Again, everybody's represented by a color. Uh, I don't know if you can see this very well, but these are double layered. Uh, so you can actually, there's like a well that you can oh, put cool. area into. Like, and then um, if you have the Kickstarter edition, there are metal trackers that fit in here um, that look like little skulls. They're very cute. I'm gonna pull them out real quick. That's and that's how you, whoa, heavy bag. Heavy bag of skulls. Um, that's my band title. Um, uh -huh. nice. But you can put them into the 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 track, and then slide them along. Uh, and this oh. is how you track your faction influence. You can see unity is points you get for doing things that serve the benefit of everybody, and you can actually win through unity, or you can win by overtaking. Um, uh, I forget what the the final. But there's like a, you can win by sheer number of points by like having oh. had the most military might, but you can also win by, or trigger the end game by doing the most uh, good for other people. There's your crypt for holding the miniatures. There's the well for Etheria. That is your currency. This is where you declare your faction. And then again, right. the influence. And you spend influence to get your guild figures to move around. You say, hey, I've got, I've got a favor to call in with Queen Gethsemane. I'd like to move the Conclave of Shadows into the theaters of memory. Uh, this is your... Uh, <laughs> this looks so weird. Uh, this is your bag of Etheria, uh, which yeah, yeah, I little, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then here are the unity tokens. These are your rewards for doing good deeds for the benefit of everybody. Again, we got the love that sound of clinking money. Uh, this one's actually really cool because it does represent all three factions in one token. Oh, that's rad. And then on the back, we've got the underworld united. Like the iPhone camera. <laughs> <laughs> and it does. Um, and just oh my goodness there are so many components then there are the um these are your like color identifying pieces oh, wow. and then the last thing i want to show you and i know i've i know i've run us long this is a monster of a board game uh, but are the um court and mourner cards these are oversized as well i think they're slightly wider than the um dark harvest cards and i if had i not packed it up i would show you but these are extremely glossy so first of all, you want to make sure they don't slip around. Um, beautiful oversized cards that represent the key players. There is a drafting phase where you draft who you want. And every card has two abilities. And you can choose which one you want to play for. And there's different symbols that mean if I choose this ability, I lose two faction influence, but I gain two unity. Or um, Elianast is my favorite. You guys <laughs> might recognize some of these images from uh, one of the Court of the Dead calendars that was put mm -hmm. out. Um, Who's a character you like? I want to find them in this deck. I don't know. Uh, oh, well, my Galavar. I oh, Gal Galavar. Galavar's in here. She's under the flesh. She's my factor. favorite character. She's pretty cool. Oh, I've shuffled this so they're all out of order. I was looking for the faction. Where are you, Galavar? Ah, and this is her. She is known as the Eyes of the Queen, but this is her siren form. And see, she That's can awesome. complete movement without cost, and and all the all the um, the symbols are outlined in the game booklet. Uh, but I did want to just call out one last fun Easter egg. There are mourners who are not the court uh, characters that you will be recruiting, um, oh. and these are characters like Centurion Fellbarrow and oh, cool. uh, Clattershanks Esquire, who you got. Guys when, might I, when I have to restart my life because of something I saw that I wasn't supposed to see, Clattershanks Esquire is going to be my name. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. But there is a, a very fun Easter egg for each of the factions that I'm looking for it, looking for it. We've got, oh my goodness, every character in here. Mm -hmm. um, here he is. Maybe, maybe, maybe. There's a card known as the Nightshade Duelist. And awesome. if you look closely... That is actually Tom Gilliland. <laughs> that sure is Tom Gilliland. There is also hidden uh, references to Pat Marino, who designed this game, and Eric Scoggin, who was on the Court of the Dead team, uh, working with the team. But you can recruit Tom Gilliland into your crypt of influence. And again, all of these characters provide you specific benefits during uh, different portions oh, those are wonderful. of the game. And, and they help you recruit uh, the guild figures and and execute actions with them. And it's it's a beautiful game of trying to vie for influence, building right. up 
for your ulterior motive. Sometimes they might tell you recruit mourner cards for extra points or uh, take over this location and you get rewarded at the end of the game. And every phase, it's very, very detailed. Um, absolutely worth a playthrough, but you you do need people who are patient enough to sit yes. through. Um, and again, this is, I mean, this this box has all the metal components. It is dang heavy. Mm-hmm. Beautiful game. I cannot wait to host a party. I need to get a table lar- large enough for that game board. But Seriously. that is that is the crown jewel of the the gaming yeah. operation. But uh, fans can rest assured there are other game projects. Um, I I know that uh, when they teased the Skybound partnership, there were other projects teased mm-hmm. uh, and mentioned with that. Um, I don't have any information on those, but what I can tell you is that all of these games that I have mentioned in these pieces um, are available on our website right now. So if you want to have a game night. Uh, you could have these uh, characters from the underworld come to you in in record time. But again, there is the Kickstarter edition and the retail edition. Right. Both are the same game and gameplay mechanics. It's just, do you want uh, the metal components and a fifth player edition or mm-hmm. uh, equally detailed, beautiful cardboard components um, that you can see in the playthrough we did with Satine, Tom, and the gentleman from the op. That is the yes. retail edition of Mourner's Call. It's a big boy. Need I yeah, remind you? A huge game. Need I remind you that this, oops, is the size of the box. And it's a lot easier to lift because I took all the components out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Amy's just gotten stronger as uh. the more she talks score to the dead, the more strength she she builds. So um, Amy, thank you so much. Um, this was a hell of a way to start our core to the dead day. Oh, you mean it's um, not... It's, or, it's, it's just the start of the <laughs> or a heaven of a way, whatever, or an underworld of a way. But thank you all so much for joining us for the first show of Court of the Dead Day. Guess what? We've got a show right after this in about nine minutes. He- uh, wherever you're watching now, you're going to keep watching uh, YouTube, the Rice Conquer Rule group or on the Let Your Geeks at Show Facebook group. We are going to be having our Alive from the Underworld show very, very shortly. Again, thank you all so very much. Head to side.show forward slash COTD day to register to get all the information that you need for Court of the Dead Day. We also have... Uh, faction please, quiz. <laughs> please take the faction quiz. Um, we expect all of you to be in the Let Your Geeks at Show Facebook group and Rice Congo Rule group after this, where we will be talking with Amy and our special guest about what factions you're all in. Maybe we'll do a live run through of the faction. Who knows? That show has no plans. It's wonderful. Um, so again, thank you all so much. Again, if there's anything here, any of these games, Court of the Dead Day, COTD Day at checkout, 10% off. I think it's good for the next 24 hours. So thank you all so much. And uh, I got to rebox this game and then get ready for my cobbled cosplay debut. This cosplay showdown with Andrew Seiko, which we all (laughs) are all very excited for. Thank you all so much. I will see you guys in just like 15 minutes for when loser die stick around. That is going to be incredible. Thank you all. Um, Happy court of the dead day. And as always, don't forget to rise, conquer, rule. <laughs> yes. And let your geek side show. I think we legally have to say.